everyone welcome to big data thoughts so today we are going to cover one topic which so many people have asked me about that what should we do if we want to prepare for an interview for big data engineer so i thought let's do a video exclusively talking about what you should learn or what you should work on when you want to appear for big data engineer interviews so let's get started so first of all one thing that i would like to mention is every interviewer who takes an interview has his or her own style and then the questions really depend on what the interviewer wants to ask so this video i'm not going to talk about specific questions because there can be many questions but i will talk about typically what is looked at when we look at somebody as big data engineer so i have spent close to 15 years uh, taking interviews for different levels and this is a summarization of my experience talking about what you guys should be preparing for so first of all big data as a market or big data is very vast because there are so many tools technologies that are out there and it's absolutely not necessary for a, anyone to have worked on all or know everything that's not possible and that is not expected but there are few things that are absolutely uh, mandatory to know some are good to know so i will talk about all of those any interview that you go for for big data engineer would typically have this kind of a rough bifurcation where 60% of the questions the interviewer asks are about your concepts of big data how well do you know the space and since it is a profile where you were you are expected to do hands on definitely there is a focus on your programming skills so you can say if 60% is on big data concepts and hands on so big data specific technologies big data concepts there is also equal emphasis on programming there will be questions on sql as well because most of the organizations who are implementing big data today are in some form or the other using sql whether it is spark sql it is hive or it is plain sql that knowledge is required then every where when you see you would see people have adopted to agile and devops so those concepts are also very necessary to know so primarily these are the four broad level categories that you will be judged at in any interview so i'll talk about each of this in detail so first of all let's talk about what in big data should you focus on or what is fundamental because while i take interviews i have observed people have done certifications earlier there were cloud era certifications then there are data bricks and many others but when you ask them fundamental questions they lack that knowledge so it is extremely important that your concepts are clear and then on top of that you can work on any technology and you can actually talk about the projects that you have done so first thing to know is distributed architecture so i have actually done videos on all of these topics i'll put the links uh, in the description so it is important to understand the whole evolution of architecture how did we move from monolith architectures like two tiered multi tiered and then we moved on to distributed why did we move on to distributed architecture what are the pros what are the cons because when we talk about big data it is essential to understand this form of architecture because with the volume of data that we are talking about we would have distributed architectures on which we are all the technologies are built so it is very important to understand how these distributed architectures work big data as a concept of course like it is very uh, well known now what is big data what are the three v's or five v's of big data and all of that but more than that what is needed is these kind of concepts the distributed architecture then cloud computing you would see all organizations are now have moved to cloud computing or uh, are are they are on their path of adoption on premises rarely getting used so everybody is wanting to move to cloud so it is important to understand cloud computing concepts why cloud computing came why is it good what all does it offer what are the pros what are the cons then big data like i said as a whole what is big data is it just about volume or it is much more than that 
how it is different, why did it come into picture, that is important to know. This will help you to formulate your answers or to explain. Sometimes you may be given just a scenario and asked to talk about high level, how would you look at that scenario or use case and implement that. So it is important to understand these concepts. Then Hadoop. These days you would not really hear a lot about Hadoop as such like you used to hear earlier but it is very good to know because when big data started this was the first distributed file system that came in and this will help you to understand the whole paradigm of big data distributed architectures distributed file systems and it is good to know what was MapReduce later on spark completely replaced MapReduce but that evolution that journey is important to understand so get to know about what is Hadoop what is MapReduce how did it all start then uh, the concepts of Hive, still many people are using Hive, it is important to know why Hive came. So there was a SQL like um, way of querying using Hive, so how does Hive work, what are the underlying uh, constructs, what is an external table, what is an internal table, how is Hive used and when is it used, that is important to know. These are all the concepts that I am talking about, we will come to hands on. Spark. These days the most prominent processing technology used is Spark. It is important to understand the architecture of Spark, why it is better than MapReduce or any other peers of Spark. What is the USP that Spark has? What are the different things in Spark? So we can write Spark programs, we can have Spark SQL, there, are, there is an ML part to it, there, is, there are a lot of things that Spark comes with. So it is important to know that. Databrix. When we talk about Spark in the market, lot of people are using Databrix, whether it is on Azure or on Amazon, people are using Databrix. So what does Databrix offer? Because Databrix has taken Apache Spark and bundled many more things along with that to make our life easy. So it is important to understand what all Databrix offers, what are lake house, what are delta tables, all of that. Data lakes. Data lakes is also another important concept because every organization has tried or is striving towards building a single source of data or a data lake. How should a data lake be built? I have done a video on that. So I'll, I'll put that link too. What are the best practices around building a data lake? Because that will give you a sense of how the uh, implementations are done. It's not just theory of having three Vs or five Vs of big data. It is about how you actually do the implementation and you utilize that data which is there. Then no SQLs. No SQLs are also getting used by many people. So whether it is HBase or Cassandra or MongoDB, the adoption rates are different, but it is good to know what no SQL is, why is it needed? What is the benefit of NoSQL versus a complete RDBMS? Then another concept to know is ELT versus ETL. We have been using ETL for so long. But in big data world, why do we say ELT versus ETL? Basically schema on read versus schema on write. That is a very very important concept to understand the benefits of schema on read that big data systems offer. Then orchestration. So once we know all of these concepts of ETL, pipelines, data lakes, it is also important to know how the jobs or the ELT jobs would be orchestrated. What are the different tools in the market? How would you schedule those jobs? This is important and any big data engineer would have to touch upon all of these things while doing implementations. Then comes security. Security in terms of how do we secure the data that we are bringing in. How do we do authentication, how do we do authorization, do we do encryption, masking. All of this is also important to know for a developer. Because security is a fundamental part of building any data platform. Now last but not the least, file formats. 
you would see people using different file formats and that has their own benefit in terms of how compressed is the file format, how optimized is it for read, for write and which one should you use, ORC versus Parquet versus others. So it is good to know pros and cons of each of those file formats and how row oriented versus column oriented file formats are different. These video links also I will post in the description. Now coming on to the hands-on part. What is the area in which an interviewer would expect hands-on experience? Because just having a theoretical knowledge will not help. Many people have asked me this, that I'm new to Big Data, I have never done any project, I have just gone through some certification, what do I do? So it is good to read, know the concepts and all, but it is extremely important to do an actual implementation. If you have not got a chance with any company to work on that, I would suggest do your own POCs, explore some of the big data technologies. Till you use those technologies actually to build a platform, build a pipeline, you would not know the pros and cons. Typically, uh, on the hands-on side, what are the things that you should have some experience on? You may not have experience on all cloud services or technologies, that is not possible. But what you should have experience on according to the market trend is Spark. Spark is one of the very good technologies to work on. It can be Spark, it can be Spark as in writing Spark programs using Py, uh, Scala or Python or Java or it can be Spark SQL. Both of these are very very widely used. So it's good to have hands on exposure on these to understand how Spark works and then implement some programs, do the performance tuning part, try to read the DAG that Spark produces to understand how the queries are getting executed. All of this will help you as a developer. Some experience on Hive, many people still use Hive, a lot of them have moved to Spark SQL but they do use Hive. So if you have experience on Hive also, it's fine. Databricks, like I said, it is the most prominently used uh, uh, Spark uh, offering. So we can, you should have experience in that. So you will know how do you write, uh, create a notebook, write the queries on your program. How do you run them? How do you use a cluster? How does Databricks work? How, do, how is the compute working? That understanding is needed. Now experience on any one of the cloud, it can be GCP, it can be Azure, it can be Amazon. Some exposure to cloud will really help you in some hands-on, some building of pipelines, doing some analytics over cloud. Now if you are using AWS, you may not use all the services, but some services like Glue, Redshift, TMR, S3, any of them that you have used practically. If you are using Azure, then you have to know about Blob, you have to know about ADF or Synapse and there are many services like for security you can use a Key Vault, you can use AD, there are so many things but you should have touched at least some of them and done some hands-on work. So this was all about big data barest minimum what you should know and it is some things are fundamental to know like I said the concepts and some hands-on on few of the technologies. Similarly, coming on to the SQL part. Now on SQL, you should have knowledge about how SQL queries are written, how they are optimized. Those two things are very important because when you write queries, you have to do a performance optimization. So what, how can you optimize a query? What is the way to do that? What to look at? Should I use a case statement versus some other way? Right? Or should I use group by? Will that be efficient? How? What type of join should I use? How many types of joins are there? So Spark has its own set of joins and their pros and cons. Spark SQL. So it is good to know how do you write those queries? How do you write them in an optimized way and performance tune them? Then knowing the database concepts like what are asset properties? What are How do we have linkage between tables? In big data you would not have primary or uh, foreign keys explicitly defined but then how do you make sure that you are maintaining the integrity how do you do a change data capture like there are different ways to handle incremental data how do you handle that do you do SCD type 1 or type 2 how can that implementation be done specifically talking about big data 
so all these things are essential to know and definitely a hands on is needed in terms of writing queries because in the interview you may be given a scenario and you may be asked to write a query for that so it is important to understand those concepts the next thing is programming languages now you may be comfortable in any one of the programming language it can be java it can be python it can be c sharp any of that but in the interviews people are asked given a situation given a use case and then they are asked to write code a code which runs they are given an id and asked to run code so you need to so you are judged on many things first of all you are judged on your thought process how do you think about a problem how do you write that algorithm do you think about all the boundary conditions all the pitfalls and then write your code how well do you do your exception handling what is the logic that you are writing so you you are given a scenario just to test your logic your thought process your capabilities of you know writing code and you are asked to write a runnable code sometimes it happens and i have seen it in interviews people write code but they are not able to execute it that's also fine as long as the interviewer understands that you have done programming because when you write code or when you write the logic definitely it is uh, it can be figured out whether you have actually done programming or not so after programming one more thing that we need to keep in mind is about knowing about agile and devops because the industry has moved towards agile practices and everybody practically is using devops so it is really good to have those uh, fundamentals also so try to get if you have used it in your projects previously that is the best thing but if you have not then it is good to understand what are the scrum fundamentals how does the agile process work scrum is one of the ways in which you can have agile and most of the organization follow that so what is a sprint what is a backlog how do you create user stories how is this whole different ceremonies of scrum executed so it is good to know that also uh, you should be knowing about what is devops how do we create pipelines how do we do continuous integration de uh, and deployment you can use jenkins or any other tool to create your pipelines but essentially you should have some hands on experience of creating pipelines for different environments and you should know the fundamentals so these are few things if you know it will it is really going to help you in the interview when questions are on how did you create your pipeline how did you make sure sure that you are running your uh, regression suites or you are running your uh, unit test cases you are doing code coverage and all of that and how are you ensuring that you are seamlessly deploying from one environment to another so i hope this has helped you to get an insight as to what you should be preparing on for an interview questions can vary but the premise on which the questions will be asked will be around these what i spoke about so thank you so much everyone for listening in please like share and subscribe to the channel to get more interesting videos thank you